Hi everyone, it's Shannon and welcome to my channel, The Daily DIYer. If you're looking for a really inexpensive and simple way to update your closet doors, then this is definitely the video for you. We recently did a big bedroom makeover in our 100 year old home, so I'll make sure to link that video down in the description box if you missed that. But in today's video, we're going to focus on updating the closet doors. I also want to thank the original Super Glue for sponsoring today's video. Now let's go ahead and get into this tutorial. I want to share with you what the simple, hollow, sliding closet doors looked like before. you a little bit about the actual trim we're going to be installing on the fronts of these closet doors. We're going to be using one and three quarter inch size molding or this is actually called lattice in the store and it comes in eight foot long sections for right under five dollars each. Now there's a couple reasons I chose this material for this project. Number one, it's because it is a PVC type material, it, which means it's basically plastic so it's pretty simple to cut. And install and the other reason being it's already white so it's gonna make it a little bit more easy for us to paint when we get to that step so now besides the trim we're also gonna need a few other things including I'm gonna be using my miter shears to cut down the trim uh, Brian did this out in the she shed and it worked really well but he's got a lot more muscle than I do so if those don't work out for me I'm gonna go grab my handsaw and miter box because that will definitely work and it's super easy and quick that way too. Um, the other thing I'm gonna need is an adhesive and a sealant, and the great thing is I'm gonna be using Total Tech by the original Super Glue for this. It is an all-in-one heavy-duty adhesive and sealant, so it is great for pretty much any type of material. It's all weather, so you can use it inside and outside, and you can even use it underwater. So it's one of those products that you just grab one thing and you're good to go for pretty much anything. So another cool thing is it comes in two different versions. You could get this one, which is for a cop gun, or you can also get one in this squeeze tube style. I actually keep this one here in my craft stash because it comes in handy for crafting even. But if you're doing like home projects or bigger projects in your kitchen, your bathroom, or trim like I'm doing here, then the cock gun version is definitely recommended. I'm so stinking excited this is my new battery powered cock gun you can obviously use a regular one but i have wanted one of these forever and ever and ever so i'm excited to try it out on this project i'm also going to be using my brad nailer to tack some of this down you'll need some safety glasses tape measure and a pencil as well so here's the first door uh we actually painted it white when we painted all the trim in the room and you can see here at the bottom where the door has actually slid uh, along that old track we installed new tracks and so what i need to do is actually install my trim a little bit higher and i'll go in there and i'll show you the reason why so let me show you first we just installed these new guides for the doors so one will go here one will go here and unfortunately they only come as wide as our doors are so we're not able to actually put the trim all the way to the bottom because it would be then too wide for these spaces so i'm actually going to come up and start my trim um, it's about an inch i'll probably go up just a little bit more than that uh, to clear this so that the doors will slide easily through here in these spaces and they won't come off of the tracks. Um, and the trim is all going to be white too, so I don't think it's going to be very noticeable. So here you can see I am marking at that one inch mark at the bottom of my sliding doors. And that is the reference point of where I'm gonna start and line up my trim at that mark at the bottom. And then at the top, I made a mark where the trim met the top of the door.
All right, these are definitely the way to go. That was super easy. Didn't even have to put a lot of muscle into it. Of course, you can use the handsaw and miter box. That would be easy too, but there's no sawing involved with this. You just, boop, done, cut. This is gonna go super quick. All right, so now that I have my first trim piece cut down to size, I'm gonna use my Total Tech as the adhesive on the back, and then I'm gonna shoot a couple one-inch nails into the top just to tack it down and hold it into place. Total Tech takes about one hour to dry, but it takes 24 hours to cure, and then it's a super heavy-duty tight bond. The nails are just to kind of hold it into place so nothing moves around. And since we are using Total Tech, we don't have to use a ton of nails, which means we don't have a ton of holes that we're gonna have to spackle before we paint. So all I'm doing here is I flipped the trim upside down and I'm running an even bead of Total Tech on the back side from the top all the way to the bottom and then flipping the trim upside down or right side up so that it will stick on the top of my door. I did really take my time with this and I made sure it was flush and even with the top of the door. I made sure it was even on the sides and I also made sure it was lining up with that mark I had made on the bottom. Once I had my trim located where I wanted it, then I took just some pressure and pressed down on the top of the trim all the way along the side that way the total tech would bond well and then i came in with my brad nailer and added only four nails one at the top one at the bottom and then two in the middle Then I went ahead and repeated this process for the opposite side. All right, so now that I have my two side pieces, I'm gonna work on the bottom and the top piece. So now that I have my frame, basically, all I'm gonna do is find the center. I have these scraps I just wanted to show you kind of what I mean. So I'm gonna find the center between the top and the bottom, and then I'll just divide those sections in half again. So I will basically end up with four separate panels. All right, so I have all of the trim on this first door. And now what I need to do is I need to fill in all of the nail holes. And I'm also gonna take my Total Tech, I'm gonna run it along each one of the edges to kind of clean it up. It'll cover up any of the imperfections and let it dry. 
I did go ahead and wipe the entire door and trim down with a wet rag just to make sure everything was clean. There was no dirt or dust that could get into my total tech that we are going to be using now to seal those edges up with so i'm running a thin line down one of the trim sides and then i took my finger you want to definitely make sure you're wearing gloves for this process and ran it down that line of sealant and smoothed it out you definitely want to also keep on hand a wet rag that is what you can use to kind of clean up any mishaps and also get some of the cock off of your gloves as you're working your way around i will say i was just kind of getting a feel for this so i did one side at a time but after this one panel i went ahead and started just putting cock all the way around the entire rectangle and then going around with my finger that way it kind of was less messy and i only had to do one cleanup of my gloves and it saved a lot of time doing it that way And here's what they look like with the trim and them all cocked. Now we just wanna let them sit and dry and cure for about 24 hours. All right, so it's the next day. These have had 24 hours to sit. Now it's time to paint. The cool thing is Total Tech is paintable. So I'm just gonna use a regular latex paint. I'm gonna go in with a brush to get all of the edges and then I'll use a roller to do the rest. So one of my secrets is I actually use paintbrushes from Dollar Tree. They're actually pretty great quality brushes and they come in a pack of three. So they're only about 33 cents each and you just really can't get more cheap than that. So what I usually do is I'll buy a few packs of these at a time and keep them handy for any of my upcoming painting projects. And it definitely is a great way to save money and it won't break the bank to have a stash on hand. All right, I have the first one painted. This one here is painted. Just wanted to show you the difference between painted and unpainted. You can see how it just pulls it all together. Whereas this one obviously is very choppy looking. So now that this guy's done, I'm gonna move on to this guy. If you enjoy quick and easy DIYs, please join me over on my other social media pages where you'll see lots more creative ideas that you can do super quick and on a budget.
you again to the original super glue for sponsoring today's video i'll have more information about total tech and where you can purchase it down in the description box below we have so much more renovating to do here within our 100 year old home so i hope you will subscribe so you can follow along on that journey with us and of course i'll also be bringing you lots of budget friendly ways to update your home along the way as well thanks so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye everyone